Hare Krishna, I welcome everybody to Bhakti Sangha Jepa conference call. Today we are very fortunate to have Braj Mohan Prabhuji to enlighten us on topic Srimad Bhagavatam, 4th Canto, 23rd chapter. What is, what is the verse number, Mataji? It's not written here. 4th four, 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 four verse. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanavad Pranam, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Guru Maharaj ki jai. Thank you so much Prabhuji for joining and giving your valuable time and association this morning. We are very very fortunate to have you on the call Prabhu. Please take over the call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for the, <coughs> all the devotees that uh, have joined today's call. Let's start. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from 4th chapter Reading from 4th canto Chapter 23, Maharaj Pitu's Going Back Home, text number 4. Tatra Padabhyo Niyamo Vaika Nasasu Samhate Aradha Okra Tatasi Vitas Vijaye Pura Tatra there, Api also Adabhyo, severe, Niyama, austerities, Vaika Nasa, rules and regulations of retired life. Susammati, perfectly recognized. Arabdha, beginning. Ugra, <coughs> severe. Tapasi, austerity. Tapasi, austerity. Yata, as much as. Swav Vijaya in conquering the world. Pura, formerly. After retiring from family life, Maharaj Putu strictly followed the rules and regulations. <clears throat> of retired life and underwent severe austerities in the forest. He engaged in these activities as seriously as he had formerly engaged in leading the government and conquering everyone. As it is necessary for one to become very active in family life, similarly after retirement from family life, it is necessary to control the mind and senses. This is possible when one engages himself fully in the devotion service of the Lord. Actually, the whole purpose of the Vedic system, the Vedic source Lord of, is to enable one to ultimately return home back to God. The Grasta Ashram is a sort of concession combining sense gratification with a regulative life. It is to enable one to easily retire in the middle of life and engage fully in austerities in order to transmit material sense gratification once and for all. Therefore, in the Vanaprastha stage of life, tapasya or austerity is strongly recommended. Maharaj Prithu followed exactly all the all the rules of Vanaprastha life, which is technically known as Vaikana Sashya. The word Vaikana Sasamate is significant because in Vanaprastha life, the regulative principles are also to be strictly followed. In other words, Maharaj Prithu was an ideal character in every sphere of life. Mahajano Yena Gadak Sabanta. One should follow in the footsteps of great personalities. Thus, by following the exemplary character of Maharaj Prithu, one can become perfect in all respects while living this life or while retiring from active life. Thus, after giving up this body, one can become liberated and go back to body. Om Ajnasi Mirandasya Ganajana Shalakaya Chakshuru Nritam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Amano Mishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamayam Ratiswa Padantitam Vande Hum Shri Guru Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsa Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam 
श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सहगनालिता श्री विशाखाता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्ते सप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विषभानु सुधे देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाशा कल्पतरूप्य कृपा सिंधुभ पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे After retiring from family life, Maharaj Kutu strictly followed the rules, the regulations of retired life, and under, underwent severe austerities in the forest. He engaged in these activities as seriously as he had formerly engaged in leading the government and conquering everyone. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Yes, Prabhu Ji. Prabhu Ji, are you live on YouTube? No, Mother Ji. I am uh, not in the temple. I am at some other. I am in the middle of a rathi yatra. I just took out time to uh, be there for the class today. So I am. I am not able to be live on YouTube. Oh, okay, Prabhu Ji. No problem. Just wanted to know. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. Once again, uh, like. great honor and pleasure to be uh, there with all the devotees on this japa conference call where all of all of you sincerely try to chant together and uh, hear shivan bhagavatam together so i take great inspiration just uh, being here and uh, and the price to for me to be here is sometimes to Speak the class. Once in a while, I also log in whenever I get time, and this time of the day, I do to hear other speakers also. <clears throat> so this uh, whole section of the Shrimad Bhagavatam is Maharaj Prithu's devotional service. How did he uh, perform devotional service? Because in the it is uh, in the third canto. Kapila Devoti, Mother Devoti asked her son, Lord Kapila, that uh, uh, how is devotion service bhakti performed, and is it influenced by the three modes of material nature? And uh, as all of you, all of us can definitely vouch for it that the three modes definitely affect our bhakti. If you are in the, if you are chanting in the morning time, which is satrugana, your bhakti is, your chanting is much better. If you are chanting in the day time, your bhakti is, uh, your ch- our chanting is uh, quite often very distracted. And if you are chanting in the evening or later in the day, then it is usually very drowsy and uh, and sometimes we tend to see, we can see all these three. Uh, is right, is right in the morning distraction, some kind, some attent, some attentiveness, and also some uh, lot of drowsiness. One of our, one of the advantages uh, we have when we chant together is that we have other devotees to look up to and uh, use that comparative mentality, comparative mindset that the mind has to chant better. And uh, today we have one of one Brahmachari here in Chopati, Sudama Prabhu. He is is a great chanter. He chants uh, very very sincerely, and he also gives a lot of wonderful kathas and chanting. One of his uh, like 
not appointed services but something he does during chanting is he, he keeps scanning for first half an hour from 6 to 6:30 he is just uh, kind of absorbed in his own chanting but around 6:30 he starts to scan uh, the whole temple hall especially all the brahmacharis and then he sees if somebody is drowsing then just he uh, if if any of you have been to chopati you, you can see this kind of a funny scene in the morning where he just uh, uh, taps on his lap that is hard slap and that sound just alerts the devotee who is sleeping and somehow the message just reaches that devotee who is sleeping that brahmachari who is sleeping and he immediately wakes up and sometimes you are not sleeping but still he taps and that time you kind of are irritated that i am not sleeping that but why is he tapping and almost everybody in the temple hall knows whom is he tapping towards of course one is visible even he is seeing you but even when he is not when we when we are in summer you know is he tapping to you or somewhere else and then he chants the hari krishna mantra a bit louder just to make you hear so even if you are not sleeping this brahmachari if you are just uh, spaced out internally i don't know how he detects but he kind of detects that you are chanting you are not drowsing but you are just distracted your mind is uh, going into plan making your mind is going into something in the past something in the future all kinds of uh, uh, as in indeed they say no tanki the mind does especially in the morning and then he just makes this simple signal that uh, he, he shows his finger to the mouth where we are chanting and then he shows the finger to the ear and he, and the message is that are you hearing what you are chanting and then the devotee also becomes alert i, I was alerted today one or two times so i became alert i mean I'm, ch- I'm chanting, but I'm uh, listening. This is one of the main important aspects of chanting. He is listening, and that's where the main trouble comes. It's not whether we are chanting properly or not, but whether we are yeah. listening properly or not. And that's where usually the mind mind doesn't obstruct our chanting. Mind obstructs our listening by taking us to so many places. And in any relationship, the first aspect of cultivating a proper relationship is to listen to the other person. And if we don't, we're not cultivating that with chanting with Krishna, then it also very very uh, easily comes into other aspects of our devotion service. I've seen this many times. That there are some like even devotees go through some seasons like. the weather goes to season the wood is also go to season there are some days when we chant very nicely where we are for able to follow our schedules we get up right on time and something happens either our health breaks down or we go for a trip or something you know schedule is hey bad and then they, then that's the season of just yes counting rounds about keeping trying to finish the rounds and there are some days where you are busy with what's happening in the world and you like currently one of the top top most engrossing things in, in which india is fully into it has never been so intense but uh, since last few months the the highest uh, pr what what they call trp uh, in the TV in the TV is is not to entertainment entertain entertainment channels is not to sports channels it's to news channels. Politics has been the topmost engrosser for people. As you know, some of you may be knowing the situation in currently in India. And the second is sports, and third has become entertainment. So the something that is supposed to be entertaining is is come to third level. so there are some seasons where we go through that and uh, <clears throat> and we have to 
become conscious and try to change that season and it becomes difficult so the definitely we are affected by the moths so mother devoti when she asks uh, for kapila that how does the, does the moth affect krishna space speaks in the <coughs> in the bhagavad gita that this uh, bhakti yoga is beyond the three moods but uh, apparently but yes that god kapil also acknowledges that bhakti is also affected by the moods and there is bhakti practiced under the with, with in the under the influence of uh, tamoguna bhakti that is practiced under the influence of rajoguna and bhakti that is practiced under the influence of satyoguna and uh, the and after that the past time that is spoken in the bhagavatam is daksha yagya which which is bhakti that is practiced in the mode of tamoguna in mode of ignorance because the end result in all these three things you will see there is there was con- there was conflict there was a difference of opinion or there was ego clashes daksha and in uh, shiva and then uh, druva and the suruchi and then indra and prudu but the whole response system the whole response is how did they respond was what made their bhakti in different modes so druva story is uh, explaining the bhakti, bhakti in the mode of passion and prudu mara story is bhakti in the mode of goodness and uh, in this we proper said that uh, prutu maharaj is the incarnation of management if somebody wants to learn management then the story of prutu maharaj is where you know how do you manage your life others people and uh, one of the important aspects of management is also to leave that leave that uh, responsibility at the right time and give it to others if you are just holding on to reins and trying to con- uh, make everything comfortable for your subordinates then uh, you will never make them responsible we have to make our subordinates comfortable but also we have to make them responsible and many times children leader they become so eng- engrossed in making their children's lives comfortable that they forget that there is another part to their responsibility is to make them responsible and they will only make they will only become responsible when you give them some responsibility when you give them some things but often we fear uh, or because any performing any responsibility is at the sacrifice of comfort is at the sacrifice of uh, giving up our own priorities and that's what is trouble sir so we either don't want them to go through the discomfort so you you kind of give them responsibility but as soon as there is some trouble comes you get into it and you try to fix it or the we 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 give responsibility you don't want to give it because they may mis- they may make st- mistake and uh, your profits or the task or the cooking or whatever the service will get affected or it will it won't be as clean as i i do it it won't be as good as if i do it but then it is good that right now but in the future when you no longer will be able to do it won't be and also as uh, govind prabhu says it is better to become voluntarily irrelevant than to become forced to be irrelevant the whole concept of manaprastha is that very soon the body is make going to make you irrelevant and if you still get uh, stuck on to 
trying to show your yourself as being relevant being uh, somebody who is feeding the family and try not, not focusing on in, inner journey then once you start to become irrelevant and your whole focus is on outside then uh, naturally the the subordinates or the children's focus is also on the uh, on the outside and they see that on on outer level you are just a burden now so then they tend to either neglect you neglect the uh, or send them send people send old people to old age homes with ashram as it is said that uh, the law of karma functions in a funny way that the parents so to make more money they put their children in uh, in child care in day care and then uh, when those kids grow up for them for them to make money more money they put their child their parents into old age homes so they care for children old age homes for old people and it's quite a uh, stifling thing when parents that have so much love and affection when they see that uh, why are my children acting like this and here kutub maharaj is showing to the world that how to come out of that responsibility is that one has taken up a family life at the right time and focus on following austerities and focus intensifying one's devotion service and uh, the exact satrapi adabya niyama vaikanasa susammate perfectly recognized so here uh, a very interesting word is used word look <laughs> a very interesting word is used for vanaprastha life which is vaikanasa ashram now most i am sure most of you have heard of vanaprastha there are four stages in uh, ashram life brahmachari ashram 0 to 25 then grahastha ashram 25 to 50 then vanaprastha ashram 51 to 75 then sanyasa ashram 76 to 100 that's how the uh, age is uh, categorized and uh, the varna varnas are obviously the what is your what kind of mindset you have so brahmana kshatriya vaishya shloka this is varna ashram system and uh, the and as jayadev maharaj says the only ashram that doesn't have problems in iskon is vana prastha ashram because it doesn't exist nobody nobody is a official there is no official vana prastha some devotees will meet here and there they say that prabhu ji and i have taken vana prastha life vana prastha life is and it's one thing vanapastha ashram is another thing there is no there are brahmachari ashrams all over iskon where those that uh, after after the retirement they go and uh, join the and there can be vanapastha but no separate vanapastha ashram exists where both uh, husband and wife are there but here the word that is used is vaikanasa and uh, those who are from south india you might have heard this word vaikanasa especially if you have gone to tirupati the the whole, the whole tirupati temple is is managed by the vaikanasa pujaris priests many many of us may think of usually think that uh, the tirupati stirangam all sri perumbudur all these temp places are managed by shri vashmas uh to some extent yes they are uh, but the main uh, dt services that are done in you know, almost all these temples especially tirupati temple are not done by shri vashmas they are done by a section of the vaishnavas called as vaikanasas and uh, the head priest of uh, tirupati temple had come to uh, visit chopati once 
and once we were sitting and discussing with him, and he was saying many things, many amazing things about Lord Balaji. One thing which he said is that when you touch Lord Balaji's body, it's as if you are touching a human's body, very soft and uh, lively. It's not, it doesn't feel like a stone. And then he said, only Vaikanasas are uh, allowed to worship Balaji directly. All of them, they are there, they are assisting. The Sri Vaishnavas, uh, and even when we went for Suprabhatam, the Sri Vaishnava Acharyas, they bring all the ingredients and give to the Vaikanasa Pujaris. And the Vaikanasa Pujaris, they are the ones who actually uh, who do the worships. And uh, just in front of the lake, what is it, the Tirtha, the behind uh, next to Vara, Vara Swami's temple there is the Sarovar so next to that uh, just in front of that is Vaikanasa ashram or uh, residence that's where all the these pujaris official pujaris stay and behind uh, the Tirumala temple if any of you are going or behind the Tirumala temple is the place where Anantacharya was staying Anantacharya was having uh, the flower garden there and uh, that place is still there. Uh, his ashram, is, his residence is still there and his, his descendants, they uh, still do many services. So the, the point I am trying to bring out here is that the Vaikanasas traditionally in the in, as per the scriptures are someone that are authorized to worship the Lord, the Lord's uh, Archa Vikraha. It said that uh, when uh, Brahma was uh, meditating and was to create the universe, when the, when the Lord gave him the instructions, one version is that he gave the, the sense in four verses, but another was when he expanded it, it, it went into several crores of verses. And he was really confused. How do I exactly put this together? And the same uh, Brahma, when he prayed to Lord uh, Narayan, the please help him, so through Vaikana Sarishi, he condensed all those verses, especially how to worship the Lord into uh, the Archa Vidra of the Lord into few cro uh, one and a half crores of verses and then th he distributed that uh, among his uh, four disciples Atri, Drugu, Marichi and Kashyapa and uh, they in turn uh, disseminated and all this happened in the Naimisharanya Naimisharanya it uh, is a forest where usually the tapasya was done and uh, there were four qualities of uh, these Vaikanas uh, Rishis or one thing is he is called as Manasika Udbhavam that he is born from the mind of Lord, uh, Lord, Lord Vishnu that is one thing. Another is that there are four qualities. I just put it them down. Give me one minute to mind Hare Krishna Prabhuji, your voice is very low. It's very hard to hear, follow you. Can you hear me now? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, yeah, because I cannot make out whether my voice is uh, the devotees that are there uh, to tell me. I'm using some kind of uh, wireless uh, earphones. So. Is is the voice okay now? Yes, Prabhuji, now it's okay. Okay, okay, thank you. So this uh, sage Vaikanasa, uh, Vikanasa whose followers are called as Vaikanasa, they had four uh, qualities but because of which they were especially favored 
the first was that achyuta gamashraya that they were fully surrendered to lord vishnu and uh, second quality was tapogranista they were engaged in severe austerities the third was brahma darshi that they were always uh, busy with uh, vedas absorbed in the vedas and the fourth is vishnu puja visharada that they were very expert in worshiping in doing the puja for lord vishnu and uh, <clears throat> sometimes this is uh, raised that so we all of us are almost at the end of our uh, grasta lives our children are have growing up they are now making their own careers so but still we cannot leave our families and uh, go to forest there no forest and uh, and so how exactly do we practice a vanaprastha so the vanaprastha ashram as as it is said is to reduce one's uh, involvement with society that can be done physically by going into a forest and if that is not possible it understanding the principle one's involvement with social obligations especially after a certain uh, phase of doing your responsibilities if you are still uh, ab- absorbed or getting uh, being anxious about what will happen to them or them one has done one this one's main anxiety should be to focus on one's own uh, spiritual growth and be so so that is one to cut off from the society another is to go to the forest and do tapasya and tapasya why 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 unnecessarily get into difficult uh, uncomfortable situations many things there are so many holdings that say that make your retired life comfortable <laughs> but the whole uh, vedic uh, vedic paradigm was make your retired life uncomfortable after you retire you should become an ankam you should take up tapasya now that can that aspect is done not just physically being uh, cut off but trying to reduce one's bodily absorption what one one way that happens naturally is that your appetite goes down you're not able to see properly you're not able to, that's not that much that much bigger but the desires are still there then uh, the body is naturally giving us a signal now enough is enough you cannot enjoy anymore but still you see that we keep just become uh this our these birds are driving our life even in old age then that is not tapasya because it is said are of the ugra tapasya we started to perform ugra tapasya severe austerities and another way is which is to start visiting holy places because when you go when you go out of your home naturally there is so much uh, discomfort involved because in our home everything is uh well planned you know where, where is what how to do huh have you got okay in home everything is uh, well yeah, planned yeah, so yeah. Okay. yes prabhu ji um yeah. we can hear him okay but when you go out for a tirtha yatra for a pilgrimage for a yatra for some service out out, out of the zone in the temple then there nothing is defined there. and that's where your real uh, attachment start coming coming out that's why i had put up a quote on uh, instagram that said that attachment is when when something outside starts to affect something inside then you know that is attachment until you do something that is not in not uh, usually done then you never know that hey, i i am deeply attached to this particular thing i never thought that this was there like all of us 
still till we started doing ekadashi or to something trying to cut off from something not available something we never knew that i am so dependent on this particular thing and then you start to become humble i will start to realize it is that the first step in uh, the following the person so visiting holy places but and uh, and whenever holy when we visit holy places we try to make the at uh, the devotees try to who are organizing try to make things as comfortable as possible and uh, but some or other yatra means there is something that is unplanned something that turns up and if things turn up that way the whole focus is not to unnecessarily suffer but the whole focus is if some things don't work the way you like then don't get upset that just accept that and move on but usually there is uh, the the more older we get the more uh, rigid we tend to be about how things should be done and that often comes out uh, on daughter in laws how rigid uh, but daughter in laws get all to do like this or like that so rigidity is an as is not something that yes one on one's own self one should be rigid but not on others so that's another aspect of tapasya so the because the vaikanasas originally were doing the entire tapasokra they were doing a lot of austerities and they were taking shelter of the supreme lord and the lord was maintaining them brahm tapokranishta brahma dashti vishnu purusha puja vicharaka and because of these four qualities worship of uh, the lord's deity form worship is given to the rishi vaikanasa vaikanasa and their followers so even today the vaikanasa sect of vaishnavas they consider it is their uh, birth right to worship lord vishnu in fact there is, there is a assumption or there is understanding within these vaishnavas who are all, almost all of them are intimate pujaris of uh, either balaji or sanganat or varadraj their understanding is that anybody that is born in their uh, in their kula is a vaishnava by birth now this seems to be ca- casteism that how can somebody be vaishnava from birth but then the way the the, the kind of regulations that they have for persons to uh, the what are the duties of somebody who is a vikanasa is this uh, that wish achutashraya you have to always be saying to vishnu tapogranishta you are intensely performing tapasya and brahma uh, darshi always absorbed in the vedas in the supreme lord uh, studying the scriptures and vishnu puja vicharada doing elaborate ritual elaborate uh, rituals if somebody is so, spending so much time then uh, what what will come out is that kind of person so that was the usually the basic and apart from that uh, when the child is in the womb usually the seventh month they do the semen the, the there is a samskara so that time they there is a specific samskara that these these rishis do this sect of uh, devotees do which is explained in the, in some of the shri vishnu literatures one minute yeah which is explained that they offer this first of all they offer this uh, this sweet rice to lord vishnu they do a elaborate yagya with the with the child and not just offer it offer the sweet rice to the vishnu but they have this emblems of chakra and shanka that uh, that they immerse in this in this uh, sweet rice 
and make it even more potent and uh, in this in a in a proper ritual after offering uh, the food into the fire they take that uh, remaining sweet rice rice pudding and chanting particular mantra tatsuto bhagavan dhanyo garva vaishnava sannita and and uh, and the more mantras that are given they they feed the sweet rice to the baby who is in the womb and making him vaishnava through the samskaras and uh, because the chakra and chakra has been uh, empowered between the sweet rice god vishnu is is there as vaishvanara as the fire of digestion will uh, use that fire and brand this devotee even even before birth into a why can i support why can into his devotee and they have great faith in this uh, process so therefore usually there is not uh, any uh, initiations that are taken because they consider that from birth he is a vaishnava and he gets full rights to worship balaji of course currently whether all of them are doing all that properly or not we, we can't go into that but this is so the so the whole emphasis that uh, of vaikanas is, is deity worship and that's what we also as uh, heard that one of the main aspects of uh, vanaprastha ashram is to engage in the service of the deity the worship of the deity more and more in the grass ashram yes the kids responsibilities and we some adjust the timings and uh, the meteorologists as per all the things that the children are born or they are growing up but especially in the vana prastha then one should again make uh, one's deity worship very strict and uh, strong and for that exclusive purpose the maharaj prithu he set the proper example he left everything and he went to the forest to worship lord vishnu's uh, vigraha archa archa form and because it's a very strong way to spiritualize one's whole existence titi worship because there is that personal uh, efforts to please to dress the lord to bathe the lord so all the time there there is that consciousness and titi worship is not just tantra is not just activities but there is um yeah as it as it chant there is mantra there is tantra and then there is yantra and uh, mantra is the 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 chant particular mantras usually they are comprised of lord vishnu's names and tantra is particular, uh, the particular uh, mudras and the devas tantra is the the instruments the, the things that we use the machinery the, the apparatus that we use uh, so we try to keep all all this three pure and we try to worship and in this way and, and, and the most important thing because time is running out it is said is that he engaged into this into uh, for performing the varapas duties in, in doing tapasyas as eagerly as he was doing manage uh, leading the government and conquering everyone one can be very eager to eat prasad but is one equally eager to serve prasad one can be very eager to give a class but is one equally eager to hear the class one can be very eager to do one particular service but is the attachment to that particular service then some kind of benefits that you get from that service or is attachment to the aspect of service so here he is showing that the his eagerness didn't change and usually it is uh, it is said that how you do one thing is how you do everything if in one if in one particular project or service you are in it into say in chanting or in something then the same kind of innate innate also comes like if you are inattentive to hear krishna's name even when you are sitting for the class unless the class is really 
amazing and uh, enthralling something very entertaining usually you will be very spaced out in the class because you are not developed that uh, aspect of listening properly and it also will come in relationships that you don't listen properly you don't pay attention and then you assume things and then it creates dif- uh, difficulties in, in relationships so either in uh, un- learning the scripture or in chanting the mantras or in and yeah, trying to have good relationships it is the same that quality of listening that uh, comes across so therefore how you do one thing is how you do everything so because pala is good to did very sincerely that uh, there was that aspect of the whole service where he had to take up the leadership position he did it in the proper mode so therefore <coughs> the result of that is that when he was doing something that is just no one knows what he is doing in the forest till now everything that he did was coming in the in the headlines but now no one knows what is he doing in the forest one can just sleep or koi dekhne hai jab koi dekhega somebody is seeing then i'll be active but because he was all doing all this for his not for validation not for proving to one's life guru maharaj wanted to prove that was his intent or as daksha not wanted he didn't want to prove but he wanted to insult he wanted to disprove that he is a great devotee so you can see that the whole man in the in the tamohuna the whole intention is to make somebody else uh, to 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 demean someone else in rajoguna the whole emphasis is i want to prove myself by proving myself then others will get demeaned which is better than just trying to do me another but in satro kana he didn't he didn't he need he didn't need to prove then uh, he was doing the in the shatakratu the uh, the 100 yagyas ashwamedha yagyas and after the 99th then indra became so insecure he started to stop and everything of course initially his son uh, gotumara son went and tried to stop indra from doing all that when things were getting really bad then brahma ji came and said stop don't do this and uh, indra immediately agreed uh, prithu immediately agreed because the, his own intention was to do what is best then because he had that kind of attachment although he did great things it is said that he adopted mother earth as his daughter first he punished her for uh, not supplying the necessities but then after she started to supply necessary she took so good care of her that even till now there is a word for her in hindi we call it prithvi that one who is the like one who is the daughter of prithu mata is prithvi and uh, so he he need to care of the earth properly so there was so whatever was responsible so he didn't need to prove anyone and not really, so therefore whatever devotion we are doing now we should be very sincere and try to do the best not going into this whole uh, rajoguna and tamoguna type of bhakti either distracted or lazy but trying to really sincerely please krishna and uh, according to the stage in life see what we can do best Uh, with the means and uh, help we have to grow in our devotion service. So this was something also really amazing. I found that he engaged in these activities as seriously as he had formerly engaged in reading the government and conquering everyone. And sometimes when we change the service, like here in Nashuram Brahmacharis, then we get to know ourselves and for others that uh, was the attachment to pleasing Krishna or was the attachment to that form of bhakti and then when we get to know that then it is out, it's up to us how we work and try to improve that so I will stop here and see if any devotees have any questions Hare Krishna Prabhuji thank you so much um, for a very nice class so I had a question here um, this is about Vaikhanasa 
So yes. isn't it like uh, both Vaikanasa and Pancharatra are specific agamas for worship of the Lord, where in Tirupati they use Vaikanasa agama and in Sri Rangam they use Pancharatra agama. And these are yeah. only agama formats, but ultimately everyone is under the umbrella of Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya in terms of uh, following Guru Parampara. Is that, isn't that the understanding, Prabhu? They, I, as I said, they don't consider themselves as part of Sri Vaishnava. They consider themselves not, uh, their main Acharya is not Ramanuja. Their main Acharya, they, they respect Ramanuja Acharya, but they don't take the Diksha and the processes that the uh, Ramanuja Acharya established. But they follow what that, what has been started by the Rishi by Vikanasa thousands of years back. They still follow, they, they still follow that. That's why they still consider themselves as separate from Sri Vaishnava. So in terms of yes, Vaikanas Agamas and Pancharatra Agamas, mm -hmm. there are some differences. Pancharatra Agamas are uh, this is this is also given. How did the Pancharatra that for five days or from when Brahmaji lost all the uh, Vedas, then Lord Vishnu told Brahma to meditate and chant the names, chant the names of him on of him, and he was helplessly chanting. And for five nights. Lord, because everything was night that time. So for five nights, Lord Vishnu was fighting with Madhu and Kaitaba to get back the Vedas. And because it was, uh, the, the extraction process happened for five days and nights, it, it uh, came to be called as Pancharatra. This is one of the understandings that how, and this was the general uh, way that was given. Yeah. So, uh, my point was that um, both uh, the format of worship that they received from Vikana Samani, which later mm. transformed into the Vikana Sam method of Agama worship is followed, of course. And again, when we talk about Pancharatra, uh, the system that was obtained in those five nights is actually Agama Shastra, which is a format of worship. Just like how we use uh, a particular uh, Pancharatra, which is Narada Pancharatra, and in Sri Rangam temple, uh, they use uh, Parameshwara Pancharatra. It's a format of worship. So, but still, yes. uh, ultimately, uh, when it comes to their Sampradaya, as they are following in today's time and age, uh, I, I was still under the impression that though this system of worship has been obtained from time immemorial before Amal yeah, yeah. Chacharya, yeah. still they come under yes, the umbrella yeah, yeah. of in that, that particular that, yeah. the, 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 You are right. Sri Sampadai, when, when I said Sri Sampadai, I said Ramanuja Sampadai. Yeah. But as they said, like Vikanasa was born out of, they considered Lord Vishnu as the mother and Mother Lakshmi as the mother. So, so, they, so they, yes, technically they are Sri Sampada and that they agree, but usually when Sri Sampada then we say Ramanujacha. So, that, that aspect they don't fully accept. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhuji then, Lord Pranam. Very beautiful class, Prabhuji. So, um, Prabhuji, in the... Uh, what is the right age for the Vanaprastha Ashram? Like, we, uh, after what age we have to go for Vanaprastha? Technically, it is 61. Because that's what is called, like, Pachas in Hindi, Pachas means, uh, Pachika, everything is digested. Then Ekka 1 is 51. Means, Kabi 1 ko jau. Ekka 1. So, that's what. They say that 51 is the right age, but then the whole understanding was that that's a pachgya, that all your responsibilities have been done, which are expected from uh, from a grasta beyond his uh, irrespective of the attachment that one carries, and uh, and uh, nowadays because of late marriages and all that, everything becomes delayed. At the time of uh, somebody try, uh, planning to become 
at the age of 25 when someone supposed to decide about brahmacharya or grahastha usually people join ashram like most of us and usually around 40 45 50 people start to uh, get married tend to get married when some somebody supposed to retire you tend to get married and then so everything is in kaliyuga becomes uh, uh, difficult to follow as the rule but we have to understand the spirit and uh, take guidance of the seniors whom we are touch with and uh, start following the principles rather than uh, trying to you know i am now uh, in this ashram right these are all principles that ashram i ashram principles this before mahaprabhu or before bhakti thakur there was no technical ashrams that were there for uh, only the rishis had these ashrams but these are all the principles that one has to uh, personally get consulting one's mentors so prabhu ji as we get older we uh, we you know cannot do the things like uh, we can do now and uh, we were saying like we, uh, we need to do more austerity and more worship and like it's like uh, making retirement life uncomfortable so so actually uh, people they reduce the services and everything as they go grow older yes how it is possible prabhu ji to do more austerity and more uh, tapasya more uh, everything it how it is possible well they used to do in the olden days one thing is that we haven't kept our body properly during the uh, formative years in childhood and uh, uh, 25 to 50 that later parts it becomes so difficult for us to do any austerities so that that creates so much trouble as we all experience that to even do basic things becomes so therefore it is takes uh, as a uh, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says when he when uh, we say Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya that Nityam means continuously and Nityam also means regularly. So same way the this uh, this principles of Prana Prasthana we one cannot do fully uh, uh, all these things then regularly one should take these principles and try start following them. rather than uh, saying there is a new opaya that uh, go on yatras or take go take up some chanting routines or uh, some kind of services that you can do and as for as austerities austerities are not just physical austerities it's also mental and uh, emotional that like how much is the your detachment so physically now we how much we can based on our bodies how much we can take if we should not definitely abuse the body or go to extremes after all we have to ensure that the body supports us till the last moment <coughs> like one brahmachari in the kartik this time the last 5 days of uh, kartik he didn't eat he didn't drink even water usually one day nirjal we do that itself is so difficult now this brahmachari for 5 days he didn't drink water didn't eat anything and it's not that he was just sitting on the sleeping he was doing all backups uh, bringing flowers doing every all whole morning program all the services So nobody even get to know till somebody uh, checked with him and he said yes, i didn't drink water or he just wanted to do the fast five days of vishnu panch so his body can take that but if somebody can't do and in the name of fasting he just collapses for the next 10 days then that is not uh, into into the therefore it's a utsa means 
endeavor executed with intelligence is there is body and he can prepare his body in such a way that he can do that then that is excellent we appreciate that but then we don't imitate that so different different body is this whatever you have fed into the body is uh, so according to our situation we should try to at least regularly start implementing more and more these principles of uh, war rashtra it's not just at the, at, at the 51 but as one one is taking responsibilities it is one's duty to also train others to and give them therefore it, uh, a famous uh, motivation speaker says that if you are doing a service or doing something for more than 2 years then there's something wrong it's not that we want to do consistently but if it's not training others and not able to uh, pass on to others then you uh, may get may get stuck to that and there is also spiritually one is eternally doing a particular service but that is attachment to krishna and that is the way they are uh, serving krishna it's not like to but uh, in our in our uh, so we should try to give train others even proper told jamuna uh, mataji that I have taught you cooking, I will taught others. And you know what I said, no Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, if you don't uh, pass on what has been given to you, then you will become envious. So the more we try to give others what we have and train others, the more our, 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 we'll see whether there is envy or whether there is no envy. So, so we should try to implement these principles, understand them and implement according to our situation and if, if, if need be then take some kind of guidance take some kind of consultant so Prabhuji you said there is no one of us the ashram in um, in uh, is gone but uh, do we need to have that that was kind of a humor that Maharaj Said, because Brahmachari Ashram, there is always so many sometimes difficulties and troubles. And in Grass Ashram, there is so many. Sanyas Ashram, there is so many. So, Vanaprastha, there is no because officially we haven't created a ashram like that. So, that's why you are just making a humor at all. If, if there is, uh, when is ashram created? When there is a group of devotees that all want to follow that particular thing, then there is, it is created. So, it can. In some, like all these old age homes, they suppose they should be, they should not be called Vridhashram, they should be called as Vanaprasthashram, when they follow the, so that com- coming together is there, but it is just, okay, maybe Buddha, you are also old, I am also old, let's stay together. But instead of Vridhashram, let there be Vanaprasthashram, let this principle be followed. Of course, whenever this topic of Vanavasta comes, uh, in, our, in our temple there is long discussions because there is not much uh, full clarity on uh, how exact one should give up everything. But usually what has been told is that the social involvement has to be reduced and spiritual involvement has to be increased, either with family or with the uh, devotees in general. Yeah, but Prabhuji, you know, I think there, they, like, we should have the one of us ashram in our ISKCON because other people they have. And actually, when, if we do here, we will, uh, even though they are not devotees, we will teach. For your information, Pune has started once. Where Pune Prabhuji? Temple, Pune Temple, right in the campus, uh, Janavi Mataji, she has funded this project. They built four floors of building right in front of uh, Vrindavan Chandra and they are going to house, it's only for old devo- older devotees, those who are, uh, they are going to house around 80 old Vaishnavas and they are going to call that as uh, Vanaprasa building or something. So there are some, uh, at, uh, in recent uh, our counseling, counseling, all counseling meetings, this was announced that uh, 
we are doing that so that the older devotees get some kind of and in our temple we are we have been always having this varishta vaishnava uh, meetings and varishta vaishnava groups where they all together try to do some yatras or try to do some chanting together so this kind of coming together based on the age and uh, one particular situation uh, is is needed so at least i know here uh, in pune they are doing uh, chopati in gb there is some plant like that now it's called it is going to be called as bhajan ashram but of course that is going to that is mainly for uh, uh, brahmacharis who are getting gold for them to focus more on bhajan somewhere near the mountain they are going to make that bhajan ashram and uh, for uh, older vaishnavas they built some uh, flats called gold and ashray or some other project where devotees can uh, have a house uh, in gb and i know so many devotees that take some kind of residence in vindavan or mayapur for the same purpose when they get old they can uh, do this one approach to life much more better so there are on the individual level and on the institutional level there is not much but a few places that are doing something for this yeah thank you prabhu ji so sure, thank you okay mr ji uh or prabhu ji sure Hi Krishna, anyone else has any question or comments for Prabhuji? One Prabhu last Ji? question, one last question I can take. I will see Dandi here. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Tanya Pranam, I have a question. Yes, Mother. Thank you so much for a wonderful and lightning class, Mr. Uh, Prabhuji. Uh, a question was, uh, I think when you were, I think, answering one of the questions of another Mataji, um uh, shamaguri mataji mentioned that if one is doing a service for 2 years constantly mm. and then you need to pass on that service could you explain on that like um like i we do see uh, people who are doing that service um constantly and then they yeah, they, of, yeah so how does that work the, this uh in some ways this is a uh, not foolish shastrik point there is no uh, there is no shastra that says this but this is how what some leaders uh, have experienced that sometimes we tend to get attached to the routine of the way that we do and after a while it becomes habitual it's no more a devotional uh, that mood is not the, the dependence on krishna uh, kind of goes down because it, it just it, it, uh, what they call in science as muscle memory the muscles learn after a while and you don't even have to have to think like you know when child in childhood when we all went to school after a few years we didn't even have to think where i am going even by just speaking to a friend you could just go because now there was no mind that was no no body the muscles knew where what to do so after a while usually that happens that usually that you are just the mind is doing other things and that that's good that uh, you can focus say here here but another aspect why this is said is that that you tend to be, uh, often identify that as the voices are those not the mood in which we do and the dependence may not be there and only when you tend to train others or change your service then you kind of know because we are all practicing but here and just like a practice you need to check all angles if you can just say cricketer just try all, all always checking with uh, yorkers and never checking with bouncers then when a bouncer comes then you, can, you cannot uh, address that so we are all practicing bhakti so one way that you you know whether you are really in the mood of trying to share non envious nature is when you try to make, so it's not 
necessarily that you have to change that service but are you willing to help others if you have others that are there that can that are, can take it take it up are you willing to give them and take a back seat or do something else but if authorities want you to continue that yes you, you are happy to continue but from your side is that kind of a hold on it are you taken over that or it's the need of the hour that there is no one else to get for you doing or you or so the these factors are there but from your side there is always that other proper this is a clear instruction that is there in the veda bits the proper told yamuna mata ji that if you're not sharing what has what has been given to you then you will become envious so that so in that context i said two years is something that uh, has been said on, as an on an average that by two years if you still doing the same thing and not uh, giving others the teaching others then you to should is this aspect involved or is is it that just there's nobody around that can, can do that very 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 good point yes prabhu ji very very beautiful point something to introspect on that uh, if as you mentioned very rightly that if the situation is such that nobody else can do and you are the higher authority that telling one to do it to can continue but then otherwise we can can do does that service more mechanically rather than anything especially that as you said after the two year yeah. point so one needs to yeah. introspect and see whether we are actually doing the most of service there or we are just kind of doing it something which is mechanically and considering it as a service yeah, and yeah. thank you so much just That's just very, very just take, say, say you are making samosas the mm-hmm. after say six months of making every day samosa you don't even have to think but say you have to make uh, some new item today there is definitely there is the dependence on krishna more when you are doing something new something rather than something that is always or it's not that it has to be that even in making a samosa on the uh, on the after 8 years there can be the dependence but that usually isn't there usually we are depending on krishna when you are doing something that you are not so good at so better to be in that zone rather than to start to become a daksha then that dependence mood goes and then you start to not feel that uh, connection to krishna so then it becomes all your uh, expertise that is giving you the happiness yeah i understood prabhu ji so basically coming out of that comfort zone yes, and then yes, trying yes. to experiment but here i just want to add and ask a question and sorry or maybe if it's talking uh, you might want no it's fine it's, it's, well, yeah, i'm just okay just that yeah just that um, for example if we are doing that service okay two years mm-hmm. may not have passed but you really liking what you're doing you are so happy that you are doing that service and somehow it is kind of going according to the skills that one has so now yes, yes. Wh- what then does that mean uh, i don't know that's what i'm uh, sometimes i feel whether it's like i'm getting attached to that service because i'm so happy doing that particular service but if somebody tells me to do the other one i'm not skilled at doing that so i'm kind of uncomfortable yeah. in doing it but now you are saying that you know you have to come out of the comfortable zone so i'm little confused so when i if i'm happy recently to... this question was asked to uh, <laughs> radhanand maharaj about uh, like finding one's nature because there is this all this talk about uh, no where you are most comfortable at what makes you happy no, even outsiders in his country keep hearing this so there is a certain pleasure happiness what gets when when some but some when 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 there are services that connects to your nature your your psychophysical nature uh, but the point that uh, rajana maharaj made in this class was that just following one's nature doesn't make you spiritually advanced it just ma- means that you are happy doing that because it fits but it can be in the same place that but along with trying to follow one's nature like arjuna it was his nature to fight but within that nature there were difficulties but he overcame the difficulties by surrendering to krishna so say if somebody likes to do that some service it's not wrong that you have to give it up there is this 
understanding that if something if you are liking something in bhakti and you are doing it then it may not be bhakti no it's not or some some people think that no just do what you like to do we we have to have a balance but the whole thing is of dependence so you if there is an opportunity it is it's all about intent if if there is an opportunity then there are others then you're willing to share but if there is no opportunity like a preacher like devamrit maharaj chandramuni maharaj but uh, radhanath maharaj for years they were in new vrindavan and maharaj recently said that the only association that i had was cow and tulsi maharaj of females otherwise i had no one so to even talk to and that's it that was their world and recently was saying that i never thought i'll be out of that and he was happy doing that but when there was a chance to share krishna consciousness then they shared so that intent is there and when krishna provides you that opportunity in fact krishna provides opportunity when there when our intent is there but if we try to own a service rather than being a servant of the service then that becomes a trouble so we should always think make sure our bhakti is all about our intentions so what's our intent yes we are happy to do that service will be i am going to do that but if authority is asked me no you should do something else. then we are okay this is if this is what pleases you then uh, we we express our need but if the need of the institution is something that then we have to balance what we like to do and what we are asked to do. thank you prabhu ji you have answered many of my unanswered questions and they are very helpful to me for guidance thank you hari krishna prabhu ji thank you thank you just stop here yeah thank you prabhu ji very very beautiful class uh, and we are obeisances to prabhu ji and all the vaishnavas जय जय